We start with a point. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Rob Bryanton here once again. Uh, those of you who are following along with the text version of my blog, uh, which you can always find at tenthdimension.com slash blog, know that uh, I've gotten pretty far ahead of myself here with the text versions and uh, trying to get caught up now. Uh, this one actually comes from October 2009 and uh, kind of a Halloween theme, uh, it would appear from the title. It's called The Fifth Dimension is Spooky. Spooky, spooky. Now, am I referring to this blog entry as spooky because it's October and Halloween is coming up? No. This blog entry is about what Einstein called spooky action at a distance. Last blog, in seeing time, feeling colors, tasting light, we touched upon the idea that Albert Einstein had problems with some of the implications of quantum mechanics, and specifically the idea that observing a particle here might be able to instantaneously affect the observations of another entangled particle far away, even on the other side of the universe. To show that he thought this sounded more like superstition than science, he called such implications spooky. On the same subject, in my book, I talked about the entanglement experiments of physicist Nicholas Geisen and his team at the University of Geneva. And I'll quote now, Entanglement is easily explained within the dimensional concepts we're now exploring. We can imagine that these atoms are still directly connected or somehow directly adjacent to each other in a higher spatial dimension, even though they may be, for example, 11 kilometers away from each other in the third dimension, as they were in the entanglement experiment conducted by Nicholas Geisen and his team at the University of Geneva in 1997. With entanglement, it seems possible that we are seeing direct evidence of actions in higher dimensional geometry that show how time is just another spatial dimension rather than a separate concept. And from our new perspective, we have another way to show that Einstein's concepts regarding no faster than light motion are not being violated. In uh, my poll, 46 is the Big Bang and Illusion, and 47 are pictures more important in science, we return to an idea from Stephen Hawking that there is an important part of our reality which is at right angles to our space-time. While he used the term imaginary time to refer to this, I've tried to show that what he's really talking about is the fifth spatial dimension. And this fits into so many other ways that science is talking about where our reality comes from that I'm continually amazed that I appear to be the only one talking about how this concept makes these ideas fit together. With entanglement, two particles can be widely separated and observing one of those particles causes the other entangled particle to instantly be affected by the first observation. If those particles were 10 light years away from each other, we're not talking about how that second particle would be affected 10 years from now once the information from the first particle traveled to the second one. We are talking about how that information transfer is happening right now at both positions. What made people like Einstein skeptical about this implication is that it implied a faster-than-light connection of some kind was occurring. What I want people to understand is that faster-than-light has no meaning once you're in the fifth dimension, because any fourth-dimensional point can be connected to any other using the additional degree of freedom that the fifth dimension affords, with no violation of the limits of space-time. Nicholas Geisen and his team have continued to refine their experiments since I published my book. Here's a few paragraphs from a recent article in Science Now, written by Phil Berardelli, which talks about Nicholas Geisen's more recent work. The name of that article is Quantum Physics Gets Spooky. This might be a rare case about which Einstein was wrong. More than 60 years ago, the great physicist scoffed at the idea that anything could travel faster than light, even though quantum mechanics had suggested such a condition. Now, four Swiss researchers have brought their possibility closer to reality testing a concept called spooky action at a distance, a phrase used by Einstein in criticizing the phenomenon. They have shown that two subatomic particles can communicate nearly instantaneously even if they are separated by cosmic distances. Physicist Nicholas Geisen and his colleagues at the University of Geneva in Switzerland split off pairs of quantum entangled photons and sent them from the university's campus through two fiber optic cables to two Swiss villages located 18 kilometers apart. Thinking of the photons like traffic lights, each passed through specially designed detectors that determined what 
color they were when entering the cable and what color they appeared to be when they reached the terminus. The experiments revealed two things. First, the physical properties of the photons changed identically during their journey, just as predicted by quantum theory. When one turned red, so did the other. Second, there was no detectable time difference between when those changes occurred in the photons as though an imaginary traffic controller had signaled them both. The result, the team reports in tomorrow's issue of Nature, is that whatever was affecting the photons seems to have happened nearly instantaneously and that according to their calculations, the phenomenon influencing the particles had to be traveling at least 10,000 times faster than light. Given Einstein's standard speed limit on light traveling within conventional space-time, the experiments show that entanglement might be controlled by something existing beyond it. Geisen says that once the scientific community accepts that nature has this ability, we should try to create models that explain it. Okay, that's heady stuff, but there are some additional sentences in this article that I'd like to take one at a time because they're very important. Although the research doesn't demonstrate spooky action at a distance directly, it does provide a lower boundary for the speed necessary for the phenomenon, says theoretical physicist Martin Bojewald of Pennsylvania State University and State College. In other words, even though the Nicholas Geisen team's experiment only showed that the connection was at least 10,000 times the speed of light, the limitations of their experiment could not prove that the connection was instantaneous. I feel certain that no matter how this experiment is improved in the future, we are always going to see indications that these connections really are instantaneous, and in fact that it's harder for us to imagine how such effects could be occurring at all if they're not the result of a higher dimensional folding of space-time, as per the kinds of concepts we're always talking about with imagining the 10th dimension. Cosmologist Sean Carroll of the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena says that it's yet another experiment that tells us quantum mechanics is right, and that there really is an intrinsic connection between entangled particles, not that some signal passes quickly between them when an observation is performed. I've quoted Dr. Carroll a number of times in blogs like Time in Either Direction, Scrambled Eggs, The Space-Time Tree, Unlikely Events in Timelessness, and What's Before and After. It seems that the more I read about his viewpoints, the more I would love to sit down and have a coffee with him sometime, as there seem to be so many connections between the intuitive leaps I have made with my project and the science that Dr. Carroll is pursuing. And physicist Lorenza Viola of Dartmouth College says there's much more to be determined. I am sure we are not finished unveiling what the quantum effects due to entanglement really are and how powerful they can be. Now, as a lovely coincidence, Sean Carroll posted a new blog entry just around the same time that this blog entry was posted, and his entry is called Spooky Signals from the Future Telling Us to Cancel the LHC. <laughs> you can find that one if you Google it. For me, this concept relates to the powerful idea of how right now we are each navigating through a fifth dimensional probability space, one plank length at a time, and that Einstein's spooky entanglement shows us that each succeeding now is actually a point in the fifth dimension rather than the fourth. This makes sense whether you're thinking about the wave function of possible universes as per Everett's many worlds interpretation, or how the fifth dimension and above from our perspective appear to be curled up at the Planck length, even though they're really not, or the idea that our universe is created holographically at the fifth dimension by interference patterns created by this Planck length granularity of space-time. Understanding how much everything within our now is connected to things that are outside of our space-time is the key, and the fact that ancient spirituality and modern science are pointing at the same concept doesn't mean one is right and the other is wrong. Everything fits together in probability space. Think about that one for a moment and enjoy the journey. Now, just before I go, here's some other blogs where we've talked about Einstein's spooky feelings about quantum mechanics. The fifth dimension isn't magic, Wormholes as Dimensional Foldings, The Long Undulating Snake, and Norway's Reverse Deja Vu. Next time, we're going to look at an item called Ringing in the Brain. My name's Rob Bryanton. Enjoy the journey.